Just over 30 days away from the NFL draft, which positions should the Texans be prioritizing with their picks? Welcome into the channel. I'm Cody Stutes. Let's talk some Texans. Let's talk about needs and maybe some luxury picks that the Texans can make here with the selections that they have in the 2024 NFL draft. Now, as you know, no first round pick due to the trade back with the Minnesota Vikings, but the Texans have pick 42 and 59, which are second round picks, pick 86 overall, which is a third round pick, 123 and 127, which are fourth round picks. We'll kind of talk mostly about those picks, but they do have three other selections spread out over the sixth and seventh round of the draft. But what positions should they be using those picks on and where could the talent density end up making it worthwhile to use those picks on? So right away with the 42nd overall pick, there's really two positions that I'd prioritize if I was the Texans with that selection. And you can position them in whichever order you want based on how the draft's looking and how available some of those players are. But one position is going to have a lot more availability than the other, which leads me to defensive tackle being the top position to prioritize at the 42nd overall pick. Names like Braden Fisk, Tavondre Sweat, and maybe even Michael Hall Jr. from Ohio State. Fisk from Florida State and Sweat from the University of Texas. Those are names that you need to think about the Texans at defensive tackle. They do not have a stud, bona fide, no questions asked starter. Now, I don't know that any of these players are, but they could certainly turn into that throughout the course of training camp and then ultimately solidify their spot come the end of the 2024 season. If you're going to go defensive tackle by committee, continue to add assets to that defensive tackle room. Devondre Sweat, there's nobody on the Texans roster quite like him. He is an earth mover that is hard to be moved. He's a big fella. 366 pounds is his playing weight, his workout weight. And my favorite Devondre Sweat story from this draft process was at the Senior Bowl. They're doing two-on-one drills where the defensive tackle takes on two offensive linemen. And he posted up one lineman with one arm. He posted up one lineman with the other arm. And then he just kind of walked them back. He is a unique talent that, yes, there are concerns about how much he can help with the pass rush. There are concerns about can he play on third downs. He did really well at the University of Texas, playing on every down and taking care of business at every turn. And I believe in Tavondre Sweat. Braden Fisk, another name that I've mentioned before here on the channel. Violence is the name of his game. And the Michael Hall Jr. was a player that was at the Senior Bowl that I'm sure the Texans could take a little peek at Hall's play. Probably a little out of place for the 42nd overall pick, but certainly in the conversation for the Texans. Now, that second position that I would tell you the Texans will have more options to select from, and that's why 42 maybe leans towards defensive tackle, but we'll go with a wide receiver for this one. Yes, Nico Collins and Tank Dell are fantastic and are the one and the two, and Noah Brown is back to help fill out the depth for this team, but if you can find a unique talent with, say, the selection the Texans have in the second round that is their own, 59 overall, if you can find a unique talent, a unique size, height, weight, speed combination, something like that, you certainly need to explore that if you're the Texans. Names that I would think about, Lad McConkey from Georgia, Keon Coleman from Florida State, whose athletic testing didn't look great at the NFL Combine, and then he ran the drills, and you're like, oh, he ran the drills just about as good as anybody else and just about as fast as anybody else. Who did that last year? Oh, that's right, Puka Nakua did that last year. He was the best rookie wide receiver in all of football last year. A little similarity there between him. Troy Franklin from Oregon. Xavier Worthy from Texas. We know about how fast he is, both actually running the 40 and playing football. Roman Wilson from Michigan. Ricky Purcell from Florida. Xavier Leggett from South Carolina. Malachi Corley from Western Kentucky. As I start to name these names, you see why the Texans would prioritize defensive tackle a little bit more than wide receiver. There's a lot more names at the wide receiver spot that would be in the conversation with that selection that the Texans have at 59 overall than there would be any other position that the Texans would be chasing. It's a very, very deep wide receiver draft. And while it is a big priority, I'm not putting it as the top priority because there's so many different options from that standpoint. 
Cornerback is another one. Now, at 42, if a really nice cornerback prospect popped into the Texans' opportunity range, that's something that they should think about doing. A guy like Enos Rakestraw Jr. from Missouri, who's thought of to be maybe a fringe first-rounder. If he's there at 42, he's a tough-nosed, hard tackler. Talking to him at the scouting combine, he talked about his favorite play wasn't even an interception. It wasn't you know, a pass breakup. It was a play recognition where he noticed the play from film, was able to fight through a block, and turn what he believed would have been a first down rush into a gain of just two, and he forced Tennessee to punt on that drive. What's there not to like about a guy like that? Super physical, maybe some concerns about his ability to immediately transition to the NFL, but he is not afraid to stick his nose into the offense's business and make some plays. But if he's not available there, maybe a guy like Kamari Lassiter, Max Melton from Rutgers. Lassiter played at Georgia, by the way. And then as you get deeper into the draft, maybe closer to where the Texans would be selecting in the third round, you think about a name like Cam Hart from Notre Dame, who I know the Texans talked to at the Senior Bowl, and the DJ James from Auburn, who is a really long, lanky, athletic cornerback, but he's also a really light cornerback as well. So there's a couple of different names from that standpoint. You could use some depth at the cornerback room. Derek Stingley obviously is here to stay, but Jeff Okuda is on a one-year contract. Um, Desmond King is on a one-year contract. And after that, the depth in the room is nothing to write home about. So adding a player that maybe towards the end of the year is pushing for cornerback three, cornerback two reps, that's something that you could hopefully focus on with that third overall pick that the Texans have, which is pick number 86. Their third selection in the draft currently, not the third overall pick. Their third selection in the draft, which is pick 86. Now the next position down, and this one has a little bit of put a pin in it and think about this. It's the tight end position. Now I want to bring up a tweet that I talked about here earlier in the week. Nick Casario was on Sports Radio 610 this week, and he talked about examples of good players in the second round. Now, he named off some players in the 2022 draft. That's not the important part to me. It's the 2023 draft conversation over here that is important to me. When he was talking about good players in the 2023 NFL draft, Casario mentioned three tight ends. He mentioned three tight ends. Sam Laporta, who was the best rookie tight end. Uh, Michael Mayer, who has some impressive moments for the Las Vegas Raiders. And then Luke Musgrave, who was probably more hype than substance coming into this season, but is certainly an impressive player and was impressive in the draft process. Three tight ends that he mentioned. The tight end room a year ago for the Houston Texans was Tegan Quateriano, Brevin Jordan, and Dalton Schultz. The tight end room now for the Houston Texans is Tegan Quateriano, Brevin Jordan, and Dalton Schultz. So when Nick Casario talks about, hey, these were really good players in the tight end spot in the middle rounds, in the round two, in the latter rounds, not the first round, I took a little notice and I put a little pin in that and I started to think about some of these tight ends that could be interesting names. Not the deepest tight end draft that you've ever heard of. Brock Bowers will go in the first round. And then it's really a pick your poison type of tight end situation. Maybe it's Jatavian Sanders from Texas if he starts to fall. Ben Sinnott from Kansas State, who is a do-it-all not great blocker, not great receiver, but can do a lot of everything at the tight end spot. Maybe it's Cade Stover who gives you shades of a tight end that is more wide receiver dependent, but vicious and violent once he gets the ball in his hands. Maybe a little Kittle-esque where he makes people pay trying to tackle him. Or it's Theo Johnson, who's the physical specimen, 6'6", ton of weight, ton of speed athleticism through the charts, but maybe the production's not quite there. That feels like a fourth-round pick. That feels like a 123 overall pick from the Texans, the tight end position. It's not a huge priority. It's not a necessarily necessity that you have to absolutely finish with a rookie from when it comes to the, the, the draft haul that you have. But it'd be really nice if the right guy was there at 123. That brings us to 127, the final selection that the Texans have in the top four rounds as we talk about this. And that position to me is the running back. You've got Joe Mixon, you've got Damian Pierce, and that's it. 
That's all the Texans have at the running back spot as we talk about this. So you can add some bodies there, sure, free agency or stuff like that. But if you added a draft pick that you knew could maybe help on special teams or had a discernible skill that could help you right away in the running back room, that would be something fun. Now, I'm going to name a couple of names that I don't believe necessarily would be there in the fourth round, but you never know with the way the NFL approaches the running back position. So Braylon Allen at Wisconsin, discernible skill. He's a hammer. He can get physical, hit some of that short yardage stuff. Jalen Wright from Tennessee is a do-it-all type of running back, maybe the top running back in this draft, according to some people. Bucky Irvin is a smaller back than some of these other guys, but obviously He's got a little versatility to him. The Texans officially met with him at the scouting combine. Blake Corum, if you've watched any Michigan football, you've watched him score touchdowns, get tough yards. You know, names like that, maybe even Will Shipley from Clemson, who's, again, got a discernible skill, catches the ball well out of the backfield. That type of player is what I'd target if I was the Texans with that 127 overall pick that they've got. So if we're kind of putting together – sort of the perfect spot for the perfect position at 42 defensive tackle at 59 wide receiver at 86 cornerback at 123 tight end at 127 running back. Now that's just based on big boards where these guys are supposed to go. If the draft process plays out right for them and how I feel today, we've still got over a month to learn about these players watch some more of them, read about them, understand a little bit more about the type of player and guy, because the Texans clearly care about that, that they are. And oh, by the way, visits with the Texans and reports about that will start coming out as well. Is that the five positions that you would use, the five draft picks that the Texans start their draft with? Let me know in the comment section down below. What did you think of some of those names that I threw out for some of those spots. Let me know in the comment section down below as well. On your way down to the comment section, how about you throw me a thumbs up? Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So much more conversation about the team and about the draft as we have plenty of time to break it all down and plenty of time to have these fun conversations about one of my favorite events in the entire NFL calendar, the NFL Draft. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I can't wait till we talk Texans again soon.